So this is eBuddy, the E1 maintenance utility, and this allows us to find any E1 flexes or cozies that we have on our local network in order to make changes to the configuration. So if I refresh the screen, it will find the cozy that I've got connected. And you can see here the IP address is 10.0.0.53, which is the default IP address for a brand new unit. Now, this IP address isn't very helpful to me because it's not in the range of the devices that I want to connect to the LAN port on my cozy. So what I want to do, first of all, is to change that IP address. So if I select it from the list and click set IP, the system will then confirm that I've got the right serial number and then it, it will give me a box in order to enter the new IP address that I need to use. And for my set of devices, the IP address root of 192.168.120 is correct. And all the devices in that range will be found by this subnet mask mapping the first three parts. And then dot 53 is the unique identifier for my cozy. So I can now set that running and pass that new IP address down to the cozy. So the eBuddy tool will send the request and then it will cause the cozy to reboot in order to, uh, to restart with the new IP address. It takes a couple of minutes to do that. So whilst we're waiting for it to, to complete, let me explain one of the other nice features of eBuddy. And that is the fact that we do not need to put my laptop into the same IP address range as the cozy. So the 10.0.0.53 default IP address is not in the range of my laptop either. Um, so what the Cozy allows us to do is to use a function called Easy DHCP, and you'll see that listed in the, uh, the top of the screen there. Um, and this allows eBuddy to set a temporary IP address, which is within the range of the network adapter of my laptop, so that my laptop can connect directly to my Cozy and make the configuration changes that we need. And we'll show that uh, easy DHCP in action in a moment. OK, so my E1 is now completely uh, updated and rebooted itself. If we click finish, we'll now see the, the new IP address ranges there. OK, so le let's look at this easy DHCP function. So again, if I select my cozy and then go to my tools menu, I've got the ability to here to create an easy IP address range within the range of my laptop. So you'll see there the range of my laptop is available. OK, next thing that we might want to do is to check the firmware version. So the firmware that's currently loaded in the Cozy is displayed here. But we've, if we select the firmware option here from the top line, then it will allow us to, to confirm that against the web. Again, we need to be logged in as administrator to make this change. And it's going to use FTP to pass the new firmware if one exists. So again, here we're confirming the IP address and it tells us the, the current version of the firmware loaded onto my system. And actually the new version that's available is the same. So we don't need to do a firmware update. We're completely up to date. If I'd wanted to, then it would have loaded the new firmware from the E1 website into the Cozy with FTP. But that also takes a couple of minutes. Another function that we can do locally on our Cozy is the backup and restore function. If you want to save a, a backup of your configuration to your local laptop or to your server, then this is what the backup allows us to do. And we can also restore that configuration in the future should you need to replace this device or anything. Another helpful option here is the support files option. If you ever need to talk to one of our team in the support department, they may, may ask you to send a backup of your device so we can check the configuration. If you include the support files, that allows us to, to get all of the configuration for communication, etc., cetera, and, uh, and check everything there. Again, this uses FTP and you need to have the administrator login in order to complete the backup operation. It will then ask you to locate on your drive where you would like this to be saved and we'll just put it in there. And by default, this saves as a .tar file, which can then be extracted. OK, so we've uh, we've backed up our, our cozy and got it on the local machine. So we've got our, our IP address set, we've checked our firmware version. So the next thing we want to be able to do is to open a browser and to access the internal web pages of our Cozy in order to make the configuration changes that we need. So here we've just opened this up in our standard browser and you can see here first time we've opened so the configuration is incomplete. Username and password ADM ADM 
we can log into our system. It then asks us which language we'd like to use. Well, I'm going to stick to English for today, so we'll apply that. Language has been updated and now we're seeing the internal setting of our Cozy 131 and the next set of slides will explain what to do next.